Hello viewers of Sounding Board, and today we're going to talk about a Star Trek figure. And this is from the Next Generation line of Star Trek, not the classic, which most of the figures I've talked about have been the classic. This is the first Next Gen figure I found at Target. Um, I do have Riker, Picard, Locutus, Q, um, and Jordy. <clears throat> but this is an extra Jordy because Target messed up their uh, hook here when they were putting it into the bag. So I decided I found another one today and I decided, well, let's do a review on Jordy. Lieutenant Commander Jordy LaForge, aka LeVar Burton, aka Reading Rainbow. The man influenced a lot of people's lives. You know, it's like, and he doesn't seem to th like Star Trek too much, because in his mind, I think he sees Jordy as a weak individual, and so they had to power him up through existential means in the show, like season one to season two, he went from Ensign to uh, Chief um, of in Engineering Officer. Um... Then in season three, he, uh, the godlike being who evolves into a, like a dark phoenix or phoenix type character, John Doe, gives Jordy confidence. Um, and Jordy never in the show, from what I've seen so far, really. He had problems, humanistic character problems and traits, but he never grew past them. They always had to give him the Mary Sue one-up, where it magically disappeared. Kind of like a D&D &D character. The flaws can be wished away. And so Jordy had, in the show, tended to never grow through his flaws like Data, or, right, or Picard even, because Picard, when the show started in the first halves of the show, he's a victim. He, he, he's supposed to be this strong, virile, old captain, but he's, they play him as a frail, weak uh, character until halfway through the show, then all of a sudden, like that, Picard snaps, snaps into a character, and the character changes. And becomes more of a uh, captain. You know, yeah, he's still that stoic, child-hating character that he started with. And he's still a victim as the show progresses, as of the cutest you show and the torture episode by the Cardassians. There are other episodes, like even in season three, where he gets captured, Picard. And even Geordi was, was a perennial victim. you never really seen... Doc Crusher or Deanna Troy become the victims of the show. It's always one of the male characters. Let's open up Jordy and see what he looks like. Because I've never seen how well Mego did the Next Generation costumes. And these are the collar costumes from Season 3. So we, we have the collars here which were introduced in season three, season one and two, they had onesies. So they had this so Picard can pull down and Riker can pull down to, uh, so at, on the bridge to keep their suits in check. He's, he's a standard mega body. I think he's a little smaller. I think he's on a smaller body frame than a regular mega, which he is. I thought it was my imagination. But Jordy is actually smaller than uh, a regular Mego, which is surprising because usually Megos have uh, one body that fits all. Jordy actually is smaller in frame. He's very he's Lavar Burton pretty much, which is kind of cool. Let's put the Romulan commander next to him instead. That's more Star Trek-y. He 
you know, even Jordy's frame is smaller. Like, he basically says, take me. I'm yours. I give up. Captain Card will save me. <laughs> no, he won't. Ugh. And it's like he had his, his head is two parts. So the goggles are are look like they can be taken off the head if you carefully. Yeah, you can if you carefully unglue them. You can have Jordy without his goggles on. But I doubt they'd stay on because he has no uh, eye things. Probably no way to keep them in play. That's why they glued them down. And he has the classic heavy gauge phaser. Not the communicator looking phaser that they had. And instead of a little pocket in the uniform, they just removed the communicator belt. Because the communicator is right here in next gen. Um, and so basically they kind of refurbished the, uh, the thing. I mean the uh, communicate the 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 phaser belt from uh, the from uh, the classic from the vintage mega I should say because see how they have that the phaser communicator part and then the belt goes all the way around like Jordy's Jordy's literally goes has this but they remove the communicator belt part. And all the rest have them too. I wish the phaser was wasn't black. Maybe they molded it in gray so you could see it better. And can he hold it without busting his fingers? No, his hands aren't pliable enough. It's just for show. And the f funny part is, they had the phaser in the package kind of like that when it should be in the pocket like this and he's got the classic legendary Star Trek legs And they, they, they even have little, I thought they went all the way around the way it looked in the package because they're awkwardly placed in the packages. But <clears throat> the boot goes, it has the next generation boot cut even. So basically, oh, reading Rainbow Lieutenant LaForge, Toby, is really kind of a cool character. It makes me want to go and open up the rest of my next gen figures just to stand up, but then I'll have have to find extra so many, especially like Commander Riker, who's really expensive right now to get a hold of. I was lucky to get one at a reasonable price. Same as my Picard at a reasonable price. But uh you know, Q and Lacutus, I can just leave them as they are because I'm not that interested in open them. But the crew I am. And I regret that not getting Worf or finding out the Worf too late that it was a Topps uh, toy exclusive. I would have actually ordered it just so I could have Worf for my crew. And Data, I'm just, it does a lot of them online right now. I can get a hold of him anytime I want between $19.99 to $25. So I can hold off right now and pick up other figures I want. But I think I've talked enough already about this figure. So until next time, this is the sounding board, signing off.